God is good. All the time. All the time. God is good. Please rise as we sing of the greatness of our Lord.
With the first candle in our Advent wreath, the candle of hope, we light it again as we remember that Christ will come again to fulfill all of God's promises to us. The second candle of Advent is the candle of peace. It is sometimes called the Bethlehem candle to remind us of the place in which preparations were made to receive and cradle the Christ child. Peace is a gift that we must be prepared for. God gives us the gift of peace when we return to him in faith. The prophet Isaiah calls Christ the Prince of Peace. Through John the Baptist and all other prophets, God asks us to prepare our hearts so that he may come in. Our hope is in God and in his Son, Jesus Christ. Our peace is found in him. We light this candle today to remind us that he brings peace to all those who trust in him. Let us pray. Loving God, thank you for the peace you give us through Jesus. 
Help us prepare our hearts to receive him. Bless our worship, guide us in all that we say and do. We ask it in the name of the one born in Bethlehem. Amen. Would you please be seated? I'd like to call forward call team and Hannah as a representative of the church council, Pastor Kay, of course, and Pastor Bill has the honor of installing this, uh, installing Kay this morning. This is a very special occasion. I don't bite. I have been given the distinct privilege of installing Pastor Kay. Uh, and if you don't know it, I've known Brian and Kay for quite a few years through Via de Cristo. Uh, so this is, really is an honor. Anyway, to install her as our associate pastor, will someone from the congregation please present the letter of call? We of Gloria Day Lutheran Church have called Pastor Kay Knight to be the associate pastor of our congregation, and here is our letter of call. Paul writes in his first letter to Timothy, chapter 4, Don't let anyone look down on you because you are young, but set an example to the believers in speech and conduct in love, in faith and in purity. Until I come, devote yourself to the public reading of Scripture, to preaching and to teaching. Do not neglect your gift, which was given you through prophecy, when the body of elders laid their hands on you. Be diligent in these matters. Give yourself wholly to them, so that everyone may see your progress. Watch your life and doctrine closely. Persevere in them, because if you do, you will save both yourself and your hearers. Pastor Kay. In the presence of this congregation, will you commit yourself to this new trust and responsibility, promising to discharge your duties to the best of your ability and joining with these people in the partnership of the gospel? I will, and I ask God to help me. Will you preach and teach in accordance with the Holy Scriptures? I will, and I ask God to help me. Will you teach and preach in accordance with the Lutheran confessions and uphold the principles of the Reformation, Christ alone, grace alone, faith alone, and word alone? I will, and I ask God to help me. Will you love and serve and pray for God's people? Will you nourish them with the word and the sacraments, leading them by your own example in the use of the means of grace in faithful serving and holy living? I will, and I ask God to help me. Will you give a faithful witness and testimony to the name of Jesus, the power of the Holy Spirit, and grace of God Almighty in all that you do? I will, and I ask God to help me. Then may Almighty God, who has given you the will to do these things, give you every gift of the Holy Spirit for strength, wisdom, and compassion to perform them. Now will you, the people of Gloria Day Lutheran Church, receive her as a messenger of Jesus sent by God to serve you with the gospel of hope and salvation. Will you regard her as a servant and disciple of Jesus Christ? If so, answer, we will. Will you pray for her, help and honor her for the sake of the gospel and in all things work together in the unity for, of Christ? Amen. Will you join with her in the partnership of the gospel? Christ called to every believer to do what we are able to fulfill the great commission? Then the work and office of associate pastor is now committed to you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. 
Let's join and lay hands. <laughs> join in the blessing. One more thing. <laughs> Together, let's pray. The God of peace who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep, by the blood of the eternal covenant, equip you with every good that you may do his will, working in you that which is pleasing in his sight, through Jesus Christ, to whom be the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Now. <laughs> Yeah, don't. <laughs> That's enough. <laughs> Why don't you all stand? May the peace of the Lord be with you always. Also with you. Please turn to your neighbor and share with us them a sign of our Lord's peace. Please be seated. This is a special time for the giving jar. Today's giving jar is designated, designated to the Monroe County Salvation Army Red Kettle. Let us welcome this special time of giving.
Our first reading is from the book of Exodus, chapter 3, verses 1 to 14. In your pew Bibles, page 44. Moses was keeping the flock of his father-in-law Jethro, the priest of Midian. He led his flock beyond the wilderness and came to Mount Horeb, the mountain of God. There the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire out of a bush. He looked, and the bush was blazing, yet it was not consumed. Then Moses said, I must turn aside and look at this great sight and see why the bush is not burned up. When the Lord saw that he had turned aside to see, God called to him out of the bush, Moses, Moses. And he said, Here I am. Then he said, Come no closer. Remove the sandals from your feet, for the place on which you are standing is holy ground. He said further, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look at God. Then the Lord said, I have observed the misery of my people who are in Egypt. I have heard their cry on account of their taskmasters. Indeed, I know their sufferings, and I have come down to deliver them from the Egyptians and to bring them up out of that land to a good and spacious land, to a land flowing with milk and honey, to the country of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites. The cry of the Israelites has now come to me. I have also seen how the Egyptians oppress them. Now go, I am sending you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. But Moses said to God, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? And he said, I will be with you, and this shall be the sign for you that it is I who sent you. When, I have, when you have brought the people out of Egypt, you shall serve God on this mountain. But Moses said to God, If I come to the Israelites and say to them, The God of your ancestors has sent me to you, and they ask me, What is his name? What shall I say to them? God said to Moses, I am who I am. He said further, Thus you shall say to the Israelites, I am has sent me to you. Our responsive reading is Psalm 25, verses 4 to 18. In your pew Bibles, page 436, please respond with the bold. Make me to know your path. I'm sorry. Make me to know your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me. For you are the God of my salvation. For you I wait all day long. Be mindful of your mercy, O Lord, and of your steadfast love, for they have been from of old. Do not remember the sins of my youth or my transgressions. According to your steadfast love, remember me for the sake of your goodness, O Lord. Good and upright is the Lord, therefore he instructs sinners in the way. He leads the humble in what is right and teaches the humble his way. All the paths of the Lord are steadfast love and faithfulness for those who keep his covenant and his decrees. For your name's sake, O Lord, pardon my guilt, for it is great. Who are they who fear the Lord? He will teach them the way that they should choose. They will abide in prosperity, and their children shall possess the land. The friendship of the Lord is for those who fear him, and he makes his covenant known to them. My eyes are ever toward the Lord, for he will pluck my feet out of the net. Turn to me and be gracious to me, for I am lonely and afflicted. Relieve the troubles of my heart and bring me out of my distress. Consider my affliction and my trouble and forgive all my sins. Our second reading is from the book of Ephesians, chapter 3, verses 14 to 19, page 950 in your pew Bibles. For this reason I bow my knees before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth takes its name. I pray that, according to the riches of his glory, he may grant that you may be strengthened in your inner being with power through his Spirit, and that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, 
as you are being rooted and grounded in love. I pray that you may have the power to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth, and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge, so that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Amen. Please stand for the gospel. Our gospel this morning comes from John chapter 1, verses 10 to 14. You can find it in your pew Bible on page 862. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God who were born not of blood or of the will of the flesh or of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. Here ends our reading. You may be seated. The kids want to come on up, talk to me today. All right. Good morning. Good morning. What do you think a family is? Yes. What's a family? Um, your family is your mom and dad. Your mom and dad. Yeah. Yes. Um, sisters and brothers. Sisters and brothers. Good. Yes. Yes. Uh huh. It, right, they love you and you love them, right? Yeah. A baby. Yeah, a baby sometimes, yeah. Okay, yes, Ira. A family is like, I'm like, everyone is together. Yes, families love us and we're together with them. You are absolutely correct. And everybody's families look a little different, right? Some of you might have a bunch of brothers and sisters. Some of you maybe don't have any brothers or sisters. Maybe you only have a bunch of sisters. Poor Bennett. Okay, but that is an amazing, amazing thing. Ellie, what do you need? My brother is my Ira. Your Ira is your brother and he is your family. You are right. But, so everybody's family looks a little different, right? But they love each other, and they get together. Have any of you ever heard of being adopted? Yes, what is adopted? Do you know what adopted is? That's okay. Yeah. It's where you have a family and you get adopted by someone. Right, someone else is your mommy and daddy, even though it didn't grow, the baby didn't grow in their tummies, right? And, and that's really, really, really awesome because that means that that family chose to love you and keep you together and be with you, right? Our gospel lesson this morning actually talked about that. It said that God has adopted all of us as his children, and he sent Jesus to all of us so that we would have the power to choose to be part of his family. That is amazing because not only did God love us so much that he chose us, he wanted us in his life, but that means that all of these people too are also children of God which makes them your brothers and sisters. So, as we grow 
And as we get into things that are making us be a little scared or feel a little bit alone, we can look to all of our brothers and sisters, even that guy with the Minnesota Vikings jersey on, and know that he loves us and he wants to be our brother. I can say that because he's my son-in-law, just so if anybody's worried I just offended somebody on my first Sunday. I might have offended him anyway, but he's used to it. But, but that is our gift from God. God sent Jesus so that we have the power to love everybody, and they all love you. So you can go up to any single one of them, even if they don't look like it, and give them a big hug and say, you're my brother or you're my sister. Okay, will you pray with me? (sighs) Dear God, Thank you for sending Jesus. Thank you for choosing to love each and every one of us and call you our ch- your children. Thank you that we have our entire family of brothers and sisters that we know love us and want to be with us and will be there to help guide us in the way that you have for us. In the precious and holy name of Jesus, amen? amen. All right. Don't go anywhere. I got some candy. Jesus loves me. Okay, there's, you just grab one and go. Grab one and go. Grab one and go. Grab one and go. Can you take one for Remy too? Grab one. Grab one and go. Grab one, Ellie. If anybody is wondering, all these are my grandchildren. All right. Ellie or Rem, o- Oakland took one for you, Remy. It's okay. She's, hmm. All right. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. What is the number one cause of car accidents today? Cars. (laughs) Of course, my son would say that. Uh, Okay, I'm done. Um, There are lots of causes, obviously. Weather, drunk driving, maybe a cell phone, eating, adjusting your radio. I've heard some people do their hair or read while they're driving. There are all kinds of causes of car accidents, but you can really boil them down to one thing. The number one cause of accidents is when people aren't looking and paying attention the right way. In other words, we're distracted. Maybe part of your sandwich falls on your lap, or your dog tries to jump out the window. That's a long story. Um, When you're distracted, when you're not looking the right way, there's a good chance you'll get yourself into an accident. And unfortunately for many people, Christmas can be like a car accident. Christmas can be a disaster Instead of a time of joy, it becomes a time of frustration and sadness. And my sadness comes when people can't find the joy of Christmas. And they make comments to the effect of, you know, they find Christmas about as fun as a car accident. But it's because the people aren't looking the right way. Many people are distracted from what Christmas is all about. 
Today is the second week of Advent, a time of preparation for the birth of Christ, of looking toward the birth of Jesus. If you're looking the right way, if you're focused on the right things, Christmas can be a time of great joy. Our Old Testament reading this morning from Exodus about Moses and the burning bush, you know, like 1,400 years before Jesus was born, seems maybe like it's a little bit odd for Christmas time. But as a representative of God, Moses was to bring the good news to his people about God. God's name, Jehovah, it was familiar with the patriarchs. But Moses asked, well, what does your name mean? What kind of God are you? And God explained that his name was a dynamic name. It was based on a he- the Hebrew verb meaning to be. He is the self-existent one who always was, is, and forever will be. The faithful and dependent God who calls himself, I am. The I am. That's a big phrase. It's a lot to wrap our little human minds around. I am. He is what? Well, Jesus told us centuries later when he came and he claimed the name, he said, he is the light of the world. He is the bread of life. He is the door, the good shepherd, the way, the truth, and the life. He is whatever we need him to be, whenever we need him to be. The Lord wants us to not limit our thinking. He wants us to look at our God as he looks at himself. He wants us to not be limited by our own man-made thinking. Our Lord is limitlessness. That God, that God is our God. Again, that's, that's pretty hard for us as we have pretty exacting parameters for things. We set up those, those you know, 5,280 feet equals a mile. And 16 ounces equals one pound. 24 hours equals a day. Our thinking becomes rather narrow and limited. But when it comes to the Lord, we've seen it time and time again. He's spoken to us through his prophets and his people. And as he speaks to us, we can see his limitlessness. He loves us with an everlasting love. His grace is an undeserved gift to each and every one of us. Moses' purpose in life was to be the witness to the limitlessness of God. His purpose in life was to testify to all those he encountered about who God is. Much like Isaiah would just a few hundred years later. This season of Advent, we have previously been looking at the names given to Jesus by Isaiah. In Hebrew culture, I kind of hinted at it before, a person's name indicated something about that person's character. So in Isaiah chapter 9, is Isaiah is seeking to declare the name of the coming Savior. He seems to be at a loss to come up with one title alone that could fully reflect the Savior's character. Isaiah actually gives us four different titles. He will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. He'll be ruling with fairness and justice for all eternity. He will come to be a light for all 
to open eyes that are blind, to free captives, and to release those who sit in darkness. But in effect, Isaiah is saying that this Savior of whom he is speaking is beyond descriptions that we give to common man. It has to be a name above any ordinary man. Isaiah says, a Savior is coming, and what a Savior he will be. So get ready. In the same way, John the Baptist, during the life of Jesus, was out among the people in the wilderness, and he testified concerning the light of Christ. Moses' job and John's job, as well as ours, is to be a witness, introducing him, testifying about the great I am, the light of the world, Jesus Christ. So are you all ready for this? So I was a football mom, and I know how exciting it is for those kids to be introduced to the crowd before the game. My heart pounded every single time I got to see my little bee come out on the field. As the teammates formed a tunnel leading out to the center of the field, the starters wait and are jumping around, and, and, and they're so excited. They're waiting to be introduced. And then the announcer says, and now introducing your Marion Tigerton, Tigerton Thundercats on defensive line, and also your punter, a 5 foot 10, 220 senior, number 75, Brian Knight. <laughs> when his name was called, and he ran through that tunnel slapping high fives trying to look so very, very cool, I was the loudest one in the stands. Jesus didn't come slapping high fives as he ran through a tunnel of disciples. I've got to tell you that. His introduction to the world, though, as the Lord's ser servant, should always be more dramatic than any other pregame introduction ever conducted. His introduction started taking place long before his birth. He was pointed to thousands of years before his coming. At least 28 different prophets claimed his coming. We've heard Isaiah's intro introduction to the starting line. He only introduced one man. The light of the darkness. Jesus. 700 years before Jesus came, Isaiah was introducing and prophesying and preaching in detail about Jesus, about his person. Maybe not his height and weight, but about the job he was sent for, the ministry that he was going to have. Moses and John did their well, the job well, too. Their job was to stand in the desert and point people toward God, the light of the world, the I am, Jesus Christ. They didn't need a PA system. They didn't let anything distract them. But for us, it's easy to become distracted, especially during this time of the year. There's so much to do, so much to think about. I actually was in awe the first week I was here. The people making all these things work. <laughs> you got to decorate. You got to get the tree up. You got to put the lights out. And you have to shop. You know, you have to find that perfect gift to make somebody go, oh, that's just wonderful. You have to socialize. You know, you got to be at all those get-togethers. You have to go to the different parties. You have to be seen. And family. You got to stay in touch with family. Maybe you have to travel to go see them during the holidays. And don't forget the food. We have to have the perfect meal ready for everybody to eat for Christmas. And for many of us, there's still work. We have to get to our jobs. So sometimes we get burned out. We get upset. We get depressed. And then we realize that maybe we've been looking the wrong way. We've become distracted. 
And maybe that's why Christmas can sometimes be so very difficult. That's why Christmas can sometimes be as much fun as a car wreck. But I pray you all remember this one thing that is so much more important than all of those others. Witnessing. In other words, focus yourself and others on Jesus Christ. When you focus yourself and others on Jesus, then everything else seems to just fall into place. Just as somebody calls out names on the loudspeaker introducing your favorite team, so also you can be that person who points people to Jesus Christ. You know, there's, this time of year especially, there's plenty of advertisements for shopping. You see quite a few ads for charitable giving. But where are the commercials about Jesus? Where are the news articles about the birth of the Messiah? Right here. All of you sitting in front of me, all of you down there, you are the advertisements. Thousands of years ago, it was Moses. During the first century, it was John the Baptist. Now, it's each and every one of you. Does that mean that from now until Christmas, I expect your job to go, is to go door to door every night testifying about the birth of Jesus? It would be nice, but probably not. What it really means is living an open Christian lifestyle in front of the people you are around, at work, at school, Wherever you are, if you're around people who have maybe fallen away, who don't necessarily go to church, those who openly admit to not believing in God, you are different. You, this means that you do what the second scripture from today, our Ephesians chapter 3, talks about. You are a person of prayer. You are thankful in all circumstances and you live openly loving Jesus in front of everyone. That's what it means to be a witness. And it's not fake. It's all very sincere. And it all comes from knowing who Jesus Christ is and knowing what he has done for you. Jesus Christ has released us from prison. He has turned our darkness to light. He became a human being in order to take away our sins. He is the reason God forgives you. He's the reason you can look forward to heaven someday. And being a witness is being willing to share your faith with others doesn't mean you have to pin somebody up against the wall and talk to them about Christ against their will. But it does mean that when an opportunity comes, you share what's in your heart. When someone says, I always feel so stressed out at Christmas, I can't wait till it's over, well then you can say, what helps me at Christmas is remembering what's most important. I know God became a man, and that's what Christmas is about. And even though I don't deserve it, he came down here for the sole purpose of dying for me. He washed all my mistakes away. That's my personal story. And I can focus on that. And that's how we can keep it all together when things get so crazy this time of year. Are you celebrating Christmas with or without the real wonder and joy of Jesus? Well, the prophets and I want us to be ready. I want to focus our hearts and minds upon him. If we've lost our focus, I pray we all find it today. I pray we are all getting ready for him today. Keep looking the right way. The Father doesn't introduce Jesus like he did with the prophets to the world anymore. 
He doesn't necessarily use a loudspeaker, but he does want the entire world to meet his servant, and he wants us to make the introductions. If you think it would be exciting to introduce your favorite sports star to your family and friends, we have someone so much better to introduce in Jesus, the I am for Jesus is not just someone famous. He's someone who cares about our friends and our family. He's someone who died for all of us and now lives in each of us. He's limitless. Don't ever tire of introducing him. Perhaps through you, someone will receive the greatest gift of all this Christmas, the gift of faith in Jesus Christ. Amen. Would you please rise? Would you bow your heads with me in prayer? Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, you are the great I am. You are the ultimate force in all the universe, and we lift you up. When you speak, the mountains shake, sickness and disease and even death crumbles before you. Governments stop their warring and demons tremble. Yet you restrain your power for our sake, because you love us. Align our hearts with your hearts as we, as, as, as we pray, Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Good Father, you called Moses out of the burning bush to do things that were unthinkable without your help. You helped him to know you as the great I am, the one who had established all of creation from the very beginning. And you helped him lead difficult people living in desperate times. Help us to be more aware of your very present help that we may live each day with great confidence, knowing that you can and do more than we could ever ask or imagine or think. You are with us at every step, in every moment, and your strength is very real. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Almighty God, we lift to you those who do not feel your presence. Maybe they've been distracted. Maybe they've been hurt. Maybe they're just proud. Lord, we ask that you open their hearts to the beauty of your presence and the strength of your character. May they know the joy of being your child. May they know the mysterious strength that comes from the leading of your spirit. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord, you are the one who defends the cause of those who must face war and evil. And we lift to you those in the Middle East and in Ukraine and the so many other parts of the world, including our own country, where people must experience senseless violence and evil. Work in the hearts of leaders to surrender themselves to your will. We pray that you would raise your people up, that they would be given the courage to walk in concert with your spirit in very, very difficult times and in the face of death. Give them the hope they need that they may support one another. May they see your face. And may those who have suffered so much experience, so may they experience your providing hand that work for them. For all of these, Lord, we pray, Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Lord, please place your healing hand upon the many that are on our hearts this morning. We lift up Linda Stump and Brett Cornett, Serene Erickson, Duane Senegals, Sandy Holly, John Anderson, Rena Burnt, and Chad Tracy. May they sense your healing hand on their lives. And we join with family and friends as they pray for Lucas, Maria, Myrna, 
Rich and Ellie, Bruce and Emery, Carl, Abby, Tim, and Linda, Peggy, Brett, Don, and Alyssa, and those that we lift to you in, in our hearts this morning. For all these, Lord, we ask that you would give them a peace which the world cannot give and help us all to reach out to them as our sisters and brothers. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for your goodness to us as a family of faith. The building improvements are done. The roof is complete. We have enjoyed several wonderful activities and times of fellowship together. And we thank you so much that when help was needed, Pastor Bill heeded your call. And today we celebrate the arrival of Pastor Kay. We celebrate all of these blessings today. May we use your blessings well to be the best advertisement of your greatness. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. And gracious Father, now into your hands we commend ourselves and all that is ours, grateful for every expression of your powerful presence. You are the great I am. Keep us pointed toward the day when you will make all things new as we pray in the great name of our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray. Our, our Father, Father, who art, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy, thy name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come. come. Thy, thy will, will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give, Give us this day our, our daily bread and, and forgive us our trespasses, trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and grant you his peace in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
just great here to, to hear you all sing. That was just wonderful. Yeah. You know that we're going to have a special meal just in a few moments. Yes, and to celebrate all that God has been doing among us. And Pastor Kay, it's great to have you here. And Brian, we've got to have you come up too. Yes. See, this, this is family, like Pastor Kay says. You know, when you get one, you get them all. <laughs> <laughs> no, welcome, welcome here, yes, as fellow shepherds here at, at, at uh, Gloria Day. It's wonderful having you here. Um, and uh, along with that, just know that um, next Wednesday, or I should say this coming Wednesday, is the Children's Christmas Program. Uh, Wednesday night, uh, come here for soup at 4.30. You don't even have to cook. Just come right straight from work. Come here and share a good meal, a good time of fellowship, and, and then uh, just see the gospel as delivered by our little ones. It's uh, going to be a, a special, very special treat. So that's this, this coming Wednesday. Also, Salvation Army bell ringing. Uh, I know that we had a wonderful weekend. Thank you so much for all of you who signed up. It was a wonderful time. Know that there is a lot of other spaces to fill. So if you got, a, you got really jazzed about your taste of bell ringing, um, I've got spots for you. And so uh, you can sign up online, sign up with me. Uh, just know that that Salvation Army money stays here in Monroe County. Uh, this is local money. It, it provides uh, funds for all of the social services, for all of those who need a, a place to stay or uh, yeah, who, need, that, who uh, need, need a little help in, to get their feet underneath them again. So, so just uh, be mindful of that. Are there any other announcements that need to be given? Just a reminder that a week from today is a Christmas cantata here at both services, and then again on the following Wednesday. Yes, yes. So that's this next Sunday. We have the cantata as well. So next Sunday is a good time. Bring your friends. Let's fill this place. So any other announcements? For those of you who are staying, they're going to direct you to the tables. And other than that, may you now go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. <laughs>